Good morning. This is Don V with Truth Be Told, and we have a couple more interesting news reports I'd like to share with you. Before we move on to that, please remember to subscribe. 90% of the people who watch my videos are not subscribers. It's completely free. It doesn't matter if it's on Rumble or YouTube or BitChute. It doesn't cost a cent. And I don't do this for the money anyway. I haven't made a dime off of it. It's all about getting that information out and waking people up to what's really going on in the background. So please subscribe and share. Without ado, let's move to it. it. Says Russia close to using natural gas as a weapon. White House says after handing ha uh, Putin critical pipeline. A top White House official said Monday that Russia may use its vast natural gas exports as a weapon against energy-starved nations. I think we're getting close to that line of uh, if Russia indeed has the gas to supply and it chooses not to. And it will only do so if Europe accedes to other demands that are completely unrelated. White House Energy Advisor Amos Hutchinson told reporters on Monday according to Reuters. Hutchinson, previously the head of the State Department Bureau of Energy Resources, added that Russia was uh, crucial for the energy supply of many nations, especially those in Europe, that rely on gas imports. Reuters reported Russia is by far Europe's largest provider of both natural gas and crude oil. Eurostat data should. There's no doubt in my mind, and the International Energy Agency has itself validated that the only supplier that can really make a big difference for European energy security at the moment for this winter is Russia, Gautzen said. However, the Biden regime and the German governed government greenlit the completion of Nord Stream 2, a gas pipeline operated by the Russian state run from Gazprom in July, the 11 billion project will pump natural gas directly from Russia to Germany. Former President DJT's administration fiercely opposed the new Russian pipeline, and Republicans in Congress have condemned the, the Biden's regime for advancing the pipeline. Increasing energy and power prices rippling through economies of the UK and Europe, and it's raised the cost for goods and services, especially household energy, just in time for winter months. Energy and Commerce Committee ranking member Kathy McMorris Rogers said during the October 21st hearing, What's happening in Europe should provide a powerful reminder of the dangers of both tight fuel supplies, depending on Russia, and weather dependent energy. McMorris Rogers continued, These reckless policies hurt people's health and welfare. Europe has been rocked by surging energy costs, which have steadily climbed for around six months. Natural gas and oil prices are expected to continue their upward trajectory as the weather gets colder and European consumers begin to heat their homes, the New York Times reported. The EU has slowly transitioned to renewable energy such as nuclear and solar power over the last few years, but it continues to mainly rely on oil and gas for its energy supply. Russia, meanwhile, has already shown a willingness to suddenly curb its natural gas supply to Europe as power play, analysts said in August. The head of the Ukrainian state-run energy firm said Russia recently kept fuel supply low as a tactic to force Europe to give final approval for Nord Stream 2, according to Reuters. Polish Prime Minister uh, Matesk uh, Markwas Was Markwaski <laughs> has separated, separately mulled launching an investigation to sober up Gazprom, Politico reported. Interesting, interesting. Always something, isn't it? All right. It may shock you to know that Democrats lied when they promised not to raise taxes on the poor. There's Nancy Piglosi herself. Despite all the promises and addresses about taxing the rich and the vows that the poor will not see a penny of tax increases, the demon rats are going full steam ahead and rolling out a pretty significant tax increase on the poorest 20% of Americans. The Biden regime has pledged not to raise taxes on anyone making less than 400000 yeah, a year. But when you look at the data provided by the left-leaning Institute of Taxation and Economic Policy, their own data shows a bigger tax burden on the lowest income earners in America. When it comes to cigarette and tobacco tax increases, the, de the Demon Rats plan, there's a 1,700% hike in the federal tobacco tax, nicotine tax, that is supposed to raise about $100 billion in new revenue. Oh, great, like cigarettes aren't expensive enough already. ITEP's data show that will be a bigger tax burden on low-income earners for more than it would affect the higher-income earners. 
And then there's a graph here. Tax change in the uh, House Ways and Means Build Back Better bill by category is percent of income. We got nicotine and tax increases. Way up there. Detractors will likely tell you that it is all but neglected by the child tax credit earn, earned income tax credit expansions. Yeah, those that still have kids at home. <laughs> get a monthly check. My tenants get more uh, for their kids than the, the rent runs. But those are seen once a year. The numbers are bigger and more noticeable then. But it's a killer on a more regular basis for tobacco taxes that would be paid at the register for the bottom 20%, especially in the midst of a potential recession that features high inflation, high gas prices, and regular supply chain features or failures and shortages. But this isn't just about the bottom 20% or the rest of the population that earns under 400k per year. This will have a major impact on farmers, which is why Kentucky Governor Andy Beshear has already come out strongly against this. Consider also the tight race for Governor of Virginia, which is the largest tobacco producing state in the country. It's also the home of tobacco giant Altira, which will probably lay off a bunch of people if the tax hike goes through. If that's not enough for the demon rats, organized labor is coming out pretty hard against this particular tax hike. As well, there's one group, the union representing workers at a unionized Swedish match, not big tobacco tobacco company, factory in Kentucky. They reportedly is in tight with the AI. AFL-CIO, a group I am pretty sure the demon rats don't want to upset, especially given how split union households were in 2016. Something else is considered here. Taxing nicotine doesn't actually prevent harmful behavior according to the Tax Foundation. And there's a little excerpt here. It says, taxing based on the nicotine content with uh, favor low nicotine liquids and could encourage increasing consumption in the quali uh, quantity of liquid. For instance, a vapor pod that has a nicotine content of 3% and contains 1 milliliter of uh, liquid would be taxed at $1.67. Whoa! Whereas a vapor pod that has a nicotine content of 5% and also contains 1 milliliter of liquid would, liquid would be taxed at $2.78. Even if there is no difference or even a negative differential, a broader health effects of the two pods. For those reasons, using nicotine as a proxy is not desirable structure. Moreover, nicotine content alone does not determine nicotine absorption since absorption depends on delivery method. For instance, Deliverance's electronic cigarette device de uh, design has significant implications on how much nicotine is absorbed by the consumer. In addition to vari uh, variations among electronic cigarettes, other vastly distinct nicotine products exist. However, due to the flawed definition of nicotine products in the bill, nicotine pouches, a relatively no uh, novel product, which is consumed similarly to snus or dipping tobacco, will be taxed at very high rates. The high rate is a result of tax being levied on milligrams of nicotine, since nicotine pouches contain more of it. Absorption through the mouth is slower and through the lungs, so these l products require higher nicotine contents to satisfy customers uh, or consumers. Importantly, high ni higher nicotine content does not translate to higher absorption. Okay, what's strange? is that while smoking is routinely considered the most harmful way to consume tobacco, as the Tax Foundation points out, but it is the least impacted by the tax hikes proposed by the de demon rats. It's almost as if they're trying to maximize the harm of cigarettes and tobacco products. Taxing as a means of influencing behavior is not a successful strategy, and it renders the promise not to raise taxes on those earning under 400000 a year a lie. The demon rats are so hell-bent on raising taxes before a potential loss in 2022 that they seem to be ignoring many factors within their own base that could negatively impact their electoral chances, all for the sake of raising more money for the government, money that won't even come close to making up what will be spent by their own legislation. Amen to that, guys. All right. China. It tells Evergrande's billionaire to pay off his insolvent company, $300 billion in debt with his $8 billion in worth. China tells Evergrande billionaire to pay off his company debt with his own money. However, it would be difficult to pay off $300 billion in debt with $7.8 billion in worth. Chinese authorities reportedly told the billionaire behind insolvent China corporation, Evergrande, to pay off his company's debt with his own money. Chinese authorities have told billionaire 
Hu Kaiyan to use his personal wealth to alleviate China's Evergrande Group's deepening debt crisis, according to people familiar with the matter. Beijing's director, uh, directive to the Evergrande founder came after his company missed an initial September 23rd deadline for a coupon payment on a dollar bond, said the people, asking not to be identified, discussing a private matter. Local governments across China are monitoring Evergrande's bank accounts to ensure company cash is used to complete unfinished housing projects and not diverted to pay creditors, the people said. The demand that Hu tap his own fortune to pay Evergrande's debt adds to signs that Beijing is reluctant to orchestrate a government rescue, even as the property giant's crisis spreads to other developers and sours sediment in the real estate market. Chinese President Xi Jinping has been cracking down on the billionaire class as part of this common prosperity campaign to reduce the country's yawning wealth gap. It's unclear whether whose fight, uh, fortune is big and liquid enough to make a sizable dent in Evergrande's liabilities, which swelled to more than uh, $300 billion as of June. That's U.S. dollars. The developers' dollar bonds are trading at deep discounts to par value as investors brace for what could be one of China's largest ever debt restructurings. It says whose net worth has dwindled to about $7.8 billion from $42 billion at its peak in 2017, according to Blueburn Billionaire's index estimates, but the figure comes with considerable uncertainty. Zero Hedge noted this as well. We've been reporting on Evergrande for months. The largest debt-written company in the world finally shows signs it could no longer pay off its debt a few months ago. We noted this is a real indication of the weakness in the Chinese economy. Is China not helping Evergrande because they know they can't address the entirety of their financial woes? So why help Evergrande? Exactly, guys. Some interesting things are going there. Maybe uh, the Bidens won't be getting all that kickback. If you know what I mean. All right. A woman who was in charge of Alec Baldwin's gun displays occult images in TikTok. The amateur set worker who loaded Alex Baldwin's gun posted disturbing videos on her of herself on TikTok, displaying occult images, perverted sexual fantasies, fantasies, and general degeneracy. Viewer discretion is advised. I'm not going to play it because uh, I don't want to get flagged on YouTube. A co-worker described her as green and inexperienced, even giving a child actor a gun without checking it. Alec Baldwin is now likely to face a gauntlet of legal challenges, including possible criminal charges, as both the man who pulled the trigger and an executive producer responsible for set safety, legal experts said. Loaded or unloaded, a weapon never gets pointed at another human being. Hollywood firearms consultant Brian Carpenter of Dark 30 Film Services told The Post. For safety, all live firearms used in TV and film product productions are typically aimed at a dummy point, not at equipment, cast, or crew. Carpenter noted, guns, he said, are never aimed at a person. You never let the muzzle of a weapon cover something you don't intend to destroy, said Carpenter, whose New Orleans-based firm has worked on the sets and scores of TV and film productions. All guns are always loaded, even if they're not. Treat them as they are. Former filmmaker and former U.S. National Shooting Team member Peter Lake put the blame on Baldwin. The buck stops with Alec Baldwin on every level, he told the Post. It looks very bad for him, and at the least, the captain of the Titanic has had a good sense to go down with the ship. Clearly, someone didn't do their due diligence, she said. They should have been checking those guns to make sure there were no live rounds. L.A. Defense Attorney Denise uh, Bowden predicted that anyone uh, running that set will be sued. Yes, Alec Baldwin was the main producer, but it might be found out that a, another producer did more to cut corners. I don't think there will be anything as bad as a murder charge, but this is going to be a legal nightmare for Baldwin, she said. The production was reportedly troubled over its firearms and general safety on the set. The LA Times called into question the safety of Baldwin's set, Baldwin's stunt double accidentally fired two rounds Saturday after being told the gun was cold. Lingo for a weapon that doesn't have any ammunition, including blanks. Two crew members who witnessed the episode told the Los Angeles Times. 
There should have been an investigation into what happened, said the crew member. There were no safety meetings. There were no assurance that it would happen again. All they wanted to do was rush, rush, rush. A colleague was so alarmed by the prop gun misfires, he sent a text message to the unit production messenger. We've now had three accidental discharges. This is super unsafe according to a copy of the message received by the Times. Will Alec Baldwin get special treatment because he's a Hollywood actor? Good question. Very good question. Well, guys, hope you enjoyed these uh, news reports. If you want to see the really interesting stuff, I, I put the, the hard-hitting stories on Rumble and uh, BitChute. Not allowed to put it on uh, YouTube. Get a strike. At any rate, hope everybody has a wonderful Tuesday. We're broadcasting under sunny skies here with a lot of wind. Looks like we might be a cool 70, 71, 72. Hope everybody has a wonderful Tuesday. And this is Don D. And we are out of here.